Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Sabin, the editor at Projector Central, and I'm here with Will Wang of Jimgo, uh, which is a brand that uh, many of you probably have never heard of before. Um, Will, thanks for joining us. Um, we're excited to have you tell us a little bit about Jimgo and about uh, uh, the, the interesting new products that you're going to be bringing to the, the United States. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Jimgo? Sure. All right. Thank you, Rob. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Will. I'm the chief product officer from Jimgo. So a little bit of introduction on Jimgo. Um, uh, Jimgo specializes in R&D and production of the smart projector and also laser TVs. So uh, the company are established in 2011, and we have been the industry leader in this category uh, ever since 2014 in China. So uh, as a brand, we see a great opportunity in the stay-at-home econ uh, economy ever since we started the company, and especially with the pandemic going on, like people are getting to a, a natural habit of spending more and more time at home, and we want to provide the user with uh, uh, more home entertainment op options to really enhance their quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's pretty much a quick in introduction on Jimgo. Okay, great. Uh, then let's let's get right into it uh, with regard to that that LED product because that is going to be new and interesting for uh, certainly for the North American market where everything has been laser driven in the UST category up until this point. So so this product is called the the O1. Uh, yeah, it's the O1 series. We have a O1 and a, also a O1 Pro. Okay, good. And we can talk a little bit about the differences there and, and, and the changes. So tell us, just give us the basics uh, just to start with. Uh, what's the resolution on this uh, UST? Sure. Uh, both O1 and O1 Pro, uh, they're 1080p. And also they're um, 4K input compatible. Gotcha. Now will, they, uh, now, will they handle HDR signals as well? Yes, they will. Yeah. Got it. And, um, and then uh, tell us a little bit about the form factor. Uh, what do they look like? And uh, what's the throw ratio like, uh, the distance? Uh, sure. Yeah. The, so they look a little di bit different than the traditional laser TV I see. Um, so uh, all, first of all, on the size, uh, it'll be around two thirds of the size of a traditional laser TV. And uh, although still being more or less a rectangular shape, uh, similar to laser TV, or we're adding a, a more design feel to it uh, using uh, the slot, slot shape quite a bit on the front. So creating a really different vibe when you're looking mm -hmm. at the device. So that we're trying to create a feel that when you're looking at it, uh, it gets you a familiarity of the laser TV, but yet you know it's a new object. It's a new device uh, that's different from the laser TV. So that's the angle we're trying to attack. And then for the pro ratio, uh, for the O1, for the O1, it is actually 0.25 to one, and for the O1 Pro, it's actually point, um, 0.21 to one. Yeah, that's that. That's interesting. Yeah, point. Uh, we we've seen projectors that have ranged anywhere from 0.19 up to uh, uh, actually beyond 0.25. But uh, it sounds like you're you're right in the ballpark there, and certainly the the uh, the 0.21 is going to be an attractive. Uh, an attractive feature. So um, tell us a little bit about the LED light engine that's in here, because that, that really is different. Um, what, uh, do you have any details that you can share on that? Sure. Yeah. So as you, Rob, you my um, you, you also mentioned earlier, uh, people are more familiar uh, when we're talking about uh, ultra short throw, people are more familiar with the laser TV, uh, but Actually, when you were to make a LED light engine paired with the ultra short throw, it can be much harder than the traditional laser TV uh, because the the, uh, the laser light source is actually, is actually more concentrated. So when you're making the making the ultra short throw lenses for the laser TV or for the laser light engine, it's actually easier in the optical manufacturing side of things. But if you're making it the LED version, uh, the light is actually not so concentrated. So it gives you a really big challenge on how you project it, how you, how you really make the ultra short throw work, especially, especially at a really small throw ratio. So we spend a lot of time, a lot of time are doing a lot of R&D on it. And for the O1 series, um, because it's also priced at a lower price point, so the lumen level would be lower than that, um, lower than the O1 Pro, but still it reaches 800 
Lumen and NC Lumen level. And uh, with the O1 Pro, we are actually partnering up with Leica to really enhance the optical performance of the light engine. So we were able to reach the, that's also why we were able to reach the 0.21 uh, through ratio with the LED uh, light engine. Like we said, uh, LED light source being harder than the laser uh, light source to make in the ultra short throw scenario. I see. That's that's actually an interesting point, and to have the, uh, you know, to have the uh, partnership with Leica is certainly a unique thing. Uh, how did that come about? Did you guys just realize you needed to to be doing some very high quality optics for this, and uh, went went to find that partner? Yeah. So that's one motivation behind of it, and also when we um, we think that. Along this ultra short throw uh, path, there's definitely a lot of advanced optical technology that needs to be involved. And uh, with us, uh, we've already spent years working on this and we also wanna know what the world has been doing, especially the industry leaders. And uh, they also come, come about to our mind that uh, Leica being the, uh, definitely the top industry leader in the camera, uh, camera lens industry, that they know a lot about the advanced optical technologies and so also we started discussion with them and it turns out they're also really interested in the laser TV and also ultra short throw LED uh, sector. So that's how we started talking and uh, found out there are a lot of similarity than uh, licensing what we do uh, R&D wise. So hence started this collaboration. And ever since it has been a really smooth ride with Leica and we've been able to learn a lot from each other. Yeah, that's uh, that. That's great. I'll be very curious to see what that looks like. Ultimately, I, I know that uh, based on the materials you sent, we're talking about being able to throw a hundred inches from about a uh, hundred inch image from about nine inches away from the screen. And uh, you know, of course, the issue with a lot of these uh, UST uh, optics is is it tends to sort of stretch out the image when you get out to the corners. Um, so I'm very curious to see. Uh, what a company like Leica could have uh, potentially done uh, with uh, with the image quality. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the setup features and things that are in this uh, in this series. Because um, I know you've got things like uh, wall color calibration and uh, mm -hmm. some other things that you've added in to to make it an easy setup that can always be challenging with the USD projector. Right, right, right. So yeah, um, with ultra short throw. We think it also gives us a, a capability of being closer to your wall and better detect and better feel your wall. Because uh, at the end of the day, um, not everyone uses a screen uh, paired with your uh, artificial throw laser projector or your LED projector. And especially being a lower priced product, people, uh, maybe more people tend to not buy a screen uh, just because uh, the price point of the projector is much lower than the laser TV. So right, right. That, 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 that does make a difference. Um, so right. go ahead. Yeah. So that's why we also think that it's uh, really important for people to, who doesn't use a screen and project on the wall to be, to have a better performance from the image. So to do that, first of all, you have to understand, you have to feel your wall. Uh, that's also, we added a lot of algorithm in there, a lot of sensor in there, try to detect the color of your wall. And that's what you mentioned, the color calibration um, on the wall color so that we know uh, what the color temperature or the color performance is on your wall. And then we adjust, smartly adjust our color accordingly so that when people are looking at your, uh, at, at the picture, it's still, it's uh, giving out an accurate color. Yeah. That's a, that's a great feature. You know, we have seen color correction, uh, you know, wall correction as a feature on some business projectors in the past and on, uh, and on some, uh, some lifestyle uh, projection products too. Uh, but uh, I haven't heard of one yet that actually will read that wall color for you, for you and automatically uh, mm. make those adjustments. Uh, so so that, that, that's a terrific feature. Um, and what about uh, things like, uh, you know, keystone and geometric correction? Have you built uh, that stuff in as well? Yep, definitely has uh, automatic uh, keystone correction, both horizontal and uh, vertically. Uh, and it's uh, interesting that you brought it up because ultra short throw, um, like when we're making it, uh, we actually know that it requires less keystone correction compared to the long throw scenario. 
uh, because for the long throw, unless you're mounting it on your ceiling, most of people are actually placing a uh, side to their sofa or uh, side to their bed. So most of the time you need to use the keystone correction at a pretty significant angle, which causes a great loss on the picture quality. And with this ultra short throw device, you can also place it right, uh, right in front of you and the, in, the middle of this, uh, in the middle of your wall. So we're trying to also have people uh, reduce their need on using uh, keystone correction. But still, we're building the automatic keystone correction, both vertically and horizontally. And also, out of focus is also building. So when you're pulling it out or pushing it in, you can automatically focus on the wall to give you a sharp image. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, about the O1 Pro. And then I want to talk about, uh, just a quick question. Is the audio system in both of these projectors the same? Uh, so the, both systems has the Dyn Audio collaboration, uh, but, uh, O1 Pro will have a slightly bigger, um, power on the speaker. Gotcha. To get get a little bit a little bit more oomph out of it. Uh, Dyn Audio is a company that will be well known to the audiophiles, uh, right, even right, here right. in the United States. Um, and certainly, uh, it's the first collaboration we've seen in a projector from those guys. Um, so True. that that uh, certainly should should provide some decent audio. Um, what are some of the extra things that you get in the O1 Pro uh, when you step up to that product? Mm -hmm. So comparing to O1, like we said, the, most of the effort went into the improved uh, light engine. Uh, like we said, the improved uh, improved uh, color, uh, the picture quality, and the improved the throw ratio, and also the improved improved brightness level. That's a big part of it. So apart from that, like I said, stereo system wise, it has it has a bigger output uh, power rate power rating comparing to the O1. And uh, also, apart from that, we added a smart camera that's going to be able to do um, gesture recognition and also body recognition. Right. So how does that work? Uh, what, is that, what is that useful for? So for the gesture recognition, mostly will be some standard command like uh, pulse, uh, play, and mute, uh, stuff like that. And for the body, uh, for the body recognition, uh, we are thinking about uh, pairing up with some uh, at-home exercise app or some fitting app uh, so you can do a lot of at-home exercise uh, using their camera, using their capability. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, and, and have the, uh, have the projector react to your, uh, your, your motion. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some contents that's going to be uh, reactive to your motion and they will be motion controlled. So that's something that we've been working on. So once we release out the product, all these contents will be updated constantly. So we'll, uh, so users will constantly start to find the stuff being added to their device uh, little by little. Yeah. One of the things that I noticed in reading about the products is that you've, you've sort of integrated your own uh, uh, user interface there. It's called the Luna OS. Can you tell us something about that? So in general, we, we just introduce that the Luna OS will have two modes. One is the uh, classic mode and one is the uh, companion mode. So for the classic mode, it will be something that's familiar with the normal user uh, that serves as the function of your normal TV stick that gives you, gives you the operating system for the uh, contents there for you to watch. Mm -hmm. And for the companion mode, it's more for a, a passive using scenario uh, where it has, uh, we have, uh, at launch, we will have uh, three or four, uh, actually have three most important functions. One is the music visualizer, and the uh. second is the weather dashboard, and third one is the message board. So for the music visualizer, when you're playing sound with your speakers, you will ha actually have like different animations and lyrics bouncing off your wall, and they're really blended in into your wall. Uh, and uh, I think with that will really give a user really vivid uh, audio experience uh, when you're feeling the music and seeing the lyrics uh, coming out of your wall. Sounds, sounds interesting. Um, let's, let's uh, move on and talk a little bit about the, um, about the U2, right? This is, this is uh, a laser TV product uh, as well, but it looks like, uh, uh, it looks like it is a, an extremely sophisticated high end piece. 
Yeah, so you too will be targeting at a more of a high end market uh, with people already uh, looking for a vivid color performance and also the best in industry picture quality. So yeah, you too, uh, you too will definitely be uh, catered to those customers. Well, let's talk a little bit about the light engine in there, because uh, from what I can see from your materials, it's it's a it's a uh, dedicated three RGB laser system, right? And that brings some interesting benefits with it. Yep, it's uh, also the first uh, multicolor, three color uh, laser light engine that we've ever made uh, on a laser TV system. So, yeah, the biggest part that we need to talk about is definitely definitely the color gamut. So uh, as the viewer uh, of the channel might know about uh, the color gamut standard, or the normal standards we use are pretty much three standards ranging from high to low. Uh, they are BT2020, DCI-P3, and the BT709. Uh, right. And the, yeah, and this light engine reaches BT2020. And also we're actually at 140%, 114% of BT2020, which is going to cover... Uh, like most of the color gamut that your naked eye can see. Yeah. Well, well that's uh, that's pretty impressive, actually. And it, it, it not only covers, so most of the content these days we know is being produced to the DCI-P3 gamut, but uh, as time goes on, we're going to get more and more content that actually uh, reaches out into the BT2020 gamut. So this projector would be future-proof in that sense. Yeah, exactly. And that's also what we're looking for because people are paying that, much of price, we wanted to guarantee that they have the best out there in market and also they can rest assured that the product can be there for years for them to use and not be outdated. Absolutely. That's always a danger. Um, now, tell me a little bit about some of the smart features in, uh, in the U2. So, yeah, the U2, we will also have our standard, uh, our classic mode of system. So it has all the contents that you need and the uh, uh, also, it's a smart OS enabled product. And uh, apart from that, we're spending a lot of time on the audio quality uh, of this U2. And because it's also partnered up with uh, Dyn Audio, uh, and uh, being a laser TV has actually a larger room for the larger speakers and the larger sound system inside of it. So we spend a lot of time developing the sound system and also fine tune it with the uh, Dyn Audio. So this. Uh, U2 not only has the best color range out of there, out of there on the market, it has this smart OS that enables you to have the ex uh, accessibility to all the different contents around the world. And also it has this best-in-class audio system that's going to really blow you away. Yeah. Well, Will, thank you so much for the time spent today uh, talking about these products. Uh, we're going to look forward to seeing them reach the U.S. market and... Uh, and uh, we wish you guys luck here in the States. Sure. All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Projection Expo. Okay. Thank you for having me. Bye.